Okay, guys. I have gotten the the hole pretty fair. Really, as, as fair as I'm going to get it until I get some primer on it. Um, you can see I've got my lifting strakes going on now. And you also see these little these little patches. That's just some 3M acrylic filler. I'll show you that in a second. So I uh, cut my strakes out, you know, per the plans. They are running long ways on the bottom. Um, you'll see here they have a slight reverse chine. I'm not done with my uh, with my fairings so, or my sanding and everything, so just kind of ignore that stuff. But um, you know, I need to go ahead and get these guys glassed in these lifting strakes so that I can start fairing them, um, and then getting right getting this hole ready for for primer. Um, so one thing about these lifting strakes, um, you know, they give you, Chris does a pretty good job in the plans of showing you how to put them on and where to locate them and, you know, the angles and everything. Um, I did tweak mine, you know, in a little bit to have a slight reverse chine. Um, so I think that they might give us a little bit more stability on the hull. Um, you can see here, this is where I'm gonna cut. So I'm gonna cut that out and then shape it up so that water will just come right right onto that lifting strake and you know lift the whole hull up. This is the uh, 3M acrylic white glazing putty. I'm just using this in these little spots just to fill in you know some of the big um, kind of scratches and you know, dings and, and pinholes and stuff like that. Um, I am going to, I am going to use some high build, high build primer, which will do a really great job of filling in all of those small pinholes, but the big ones do need to be filled in with, you know, with fairing or some of the, you know, acrylic glazing putty. You know, you can kind of see, see, I need to go back and fill that little pinhole in and you know, that kind of stuff. So it does an okay job. Um, it doesn't do a great job for big holes. Yeah, I'm trying to fill, you know, those types of things with that filler, you know, I already went over it once and it doesn't do the best job, but this high build primer, like I said, will really fill, you know, most of those little pinholes. You can see like the layers of um, glass overlap you know, where I overlap my glass layers. Um, you know, back to the lifting strakes. So you'll see here, I have my running pad. My running pad flattens out in the center. Uh, so all of the water is just gonna come, you know, right off. It's gonna, that, you know, that the bow is gonna break it and then it's gonna roll right into that running pad. Um, and then these reverse chines are gonna kind of cur curve the water, you know, in and really lift the boat up. Um, you know, those those lifting chines should do a great job of, of giving this boat a lot of really great stability. And, um, and then the running pad's gonna help keep it, you know, running super skinny and super skinny water, you know, so. I'm pretty excited about it. It's, it's really coming together nicely now. Um, you know, this is like a 10 degree, you know, lifting, lifting strike, you know, so, um, it's not, it's nothing major, you know, but just that little bit will do you a lot of good. You can see how it has a little bit of reverse chine. It kind of tilts in. It's not perfectly flat with or parallel with the running pad. Instead, it has a little bit of reverse chine in it, which I think is going to be really, you know, really advantageous to a very stable boat. So I'm about to glass these in, and get my next strakes in, fair all that out, and do some more sanding. I'll probably put a guide coat on the whole hull, turn it black, come in here with some you know, 120 and then get it up to 180 and and uh, get it all ready for for priming. 
I do need to come in here and still glass these this expo exposed foam. I would just um, ground that off so that my trim tabs fit and it's starting to look really, really nice. Um, I think I'm actually gonna try vacuum bagging, you know, this little area so that I get a really good suction in my, uh, you know, my fiberglass. Um, and it gets really down, you know, into that area. I still got to hand sand it a lot more, but hey, we're getting there. Okay, guys, as you'll see, I've got these lifting strakes glued down. Now, I'm gonna have to sand down the leading edge on, on these guys. You don't want that sharp 90 there, obviously. You know, but they're looking good. You know, they go right before the trim tab pockets. And they are perfectly measured to be as straight as possible. A little bit of reverse chine. I think it's gonna be good. Now I'm gonna come in here and <clears throat> sand all these edges down and roll them over so that the cloth will lay down on them. See, it should be a pretty much seamless transition. And I'll knock this, you know, that edge over right there too. All the way down. Same thing on this side. got my pulling reverse strakes all screwed in and glued down see it's in line with the lifting lifting straights back there but if you can see they will always be just above the keel so they will never, they should never really hit the bottom before the keel does. Although they will be in the water at most of the time, unless we're up and running on plane, these strikes will help, help keep the boat straight and pull straight. You know, give you a little grip in the water to track really nice. Okay, so I've started, <clears throat> I've radiused all of the, the corners of these strakes. See, they've got a little bit of a, probably like an eighth inch radius all the way around. This will help the cloth make that turn Cloth really does not like to make a hard, sharp turn. So you kind of got to give it a little bit of an angle. You see how I knocked this edge down and rolled it over. You got to give it an angle, you know, to, to make that, uh, to make that turn. About ready for glassing. So glassing these <clears throat> lifting strakes up. I've actually got I'm doing two layers of 10 ounce cloth. Uh, the first layer is a little bit smaller and then the second layer is a little bit bigger and just overlaps that first layer. It's really important when you're, you know, when you're doing this to not have any air bubbles underneath. I actually painted these with some epoxy and West Systems 404 
just a little bit mixed into the epoxy uh, before laying my first layer down. I didn't let that dry, but just kind of soak the um, soak the foam with that, and also got it up in the in the radiuses. Um, you know that 404 just a little bit mixed in is acts almost like a glue. This this 10 ounce the 10 ounce epoxy is is really difficult to make hard turns so you just have to constantly come over here and and be tamping this thing down you know especially like hard areas like this with big angles you know so looks a little glossy right here the resin is starting to run out and and come down uh, but overall the layup looks pretty good this I actually did this uh, I did this side first so you can see there's a couple of little spots where the cloth is wanting to lift up see that little so you just get in here with a, a chip brush and kind of tamp you know tamp those areas down um, that Laying that radius with some filler is really key before doing this because you need a rounded edge to get this 10 ounce cloth to actually lay down. Looking back on this now, I would definitely recommend, you know, if you're gonna do this, I recommend using uh, a polyester, um, you know, laminating resin uh, instead of epoxy. Um, the epoxy is, I mean, it's stronger, but it's kind of a pain, um, you know, cause you can't really, I mean, you can use some, some mat, like chop strand mat that can take these turns, no problem. But, um, you know, you have to use some, some extra stuff to actually make it work. And still it doesn't work as well as, as like a, um, you know, like a vinyl ester resin or something. So. But I'm gonna just keep doing this and start sanding those guys down a little bit more and then move on to that. Got the polling strakes glassed in with the help from the wife. It's looking good. Had to taper them down some so they aren't such crazy angles. See how that how that angle kind of just tapers right on off. Same on the other side. But they're well below the keel, which is going to be nice when pulling. I don't have to worry about them hitting the bottom, but they'll still be in the water, which will help me track track straight and pull straight pretty excited use that uh epoxy and a little bit of west systems 404 that 404 is is really key when laying this 10 ounce epoxy <clears throat> it just gives you a nice glue you know gluey sticky you know adhesion it's just hard to beat with just instead of just regular epoxy by itself you know the deal. Like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.